Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Project HD Chronicles, or welcome if this is your first time. Let's start the video with this iconic image of the Raspberry, careful, the Raspberry P500, which we can almost define as a personal computer, if not a full-fledged personal computer. In this video, we will analyze its various features, components, some details, and we'll discover how this Raspberry is a fast, powerful, integrated PC with a mark of quality. The ultimate solution for those who want both performance and compactness. Stay with me until the end of the video. I have been, let's say, a user of Raspberry from the very first models, so from Raspberry 1 up to the latest versions, except for this one. I skipped the 4. At first, yes, there were some issues regarding heat dissipation, but that was only in the very first initial versions. Obviously, everything has since been completely resolved, and today, especially with the remarkable Raspberry Pi 500, we can now confidently consider this entire ecosystem a truly mature product, on par with, if not very closely approaching, what we can accurately call a full-fledged personal computer. In fact, this particular Raspberry, and here we can clearly see it as a comprehensive five-in-one solution, truly boasts an array of enviable and impressive features because it genuinely has absolutely everything you could possibly need, all conveniently packaged in a single complete kit. So what we get, and pay attention here, we're talking about the Buy Desktop Kit, is a mouse, a USB power supply, an HDMI cable that we can connect directly to the monitor, and it also includes a guide. Everything is integrated together as a single unit. And all of this is designed to provide a unique experience for the user. By the way, I was just reading here, and I'll show you this on another screen in a moment, so please bear with me for just a little while longer. We also have the excellent option to acquire a dedicated Raspberry Pi monitor, which is a very generous 15.6 inches in size, offering a truly stunning full HD IPS display and it can also be conveniently powered directly from a single USB port, making it incredibly versatile. It can be easily wall-mounted for a clean setup or, as you can clearly observe here in this demonstration, gracefully placed on a desk for immediate use. The Raspberry Pi 500, a remarkable piece of engineering, still robustly houses the very same powerful 64-bit quad-core ARM processor and the highly efficient RP1 controller, both directly inherited from the acclaimed Raspberry Pi 5. It proudly features an integrated aluminum heatsink, which is specifically designed to provide superior thermal performance, effectively addressing any potential heating issues that might arise but it still meticulously maintains smooth and consistent speed even under fairly heavy and demanding loads, ensuring optimal operation. I already mentioned this crucial detail before, but it bears repeating. It supports dual video output. Here we can clearly see the primary HDMI port, and it even supports an astonishing 4K resolution for a truly breathtaking and immersive visual experience. Let's also take a closer look at some of its most impressive features. Here we have the standard Raspberry Pi 5, here we have the premium desktop version, and we'll immediately go over some of its most important and innovative features in detail. First of all, I wanted to introduce the fact that we're dealing with Raspberry Pi OS, and this operating system is specifically designed to make the most of the Raspberry Pi 500 hardware, the latest version, and it offers a smooth, complete desktop experience that's perfect for work, leisure, and much more. Of course, this is what the website says, but like with all products, you really need to try them out yourself. Here we have various documentation, including technical documentation. The CPU is a quad-core ARM Cortex-A76 running at 2.4 GHz with cryptographic extensions. As for the RAM, we're already looking at 8 GB, but I also read that there are 16 GB versions available, and I'll go ahead and confirm that information. For storage, as always, there's a 32 gigabyte Class A 2 micro SD card included. In terms of connectivity, it's important to note that it has dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and also gigabit Ethernet. Here, if I can show you this part here, these are the ports we already talked about. They're back here, two USB 3.0, one USB 2.0, HDMI, and 4K at 60 frames per second. It offers the most modern codecs, including H.265, specifically to support 4K at 60 FPS, 
as well as OpenGL and Vulkan. As for the GPIO, I read that it's a horizontal 40 pin layout, but that's already getting quite technical. The keyboard is very compact with 78, 79 or 83 keys. And then there's an external power limitation via USB 5V. Guaranteed lifespan, of course. And as of today in 2025, I read that production going back to the first page should be guaranteed until 2034. But anyway, I'll go check where I repeated that information. Perfect, 2034, January. The Raspberry Pi will remain in production until at least January of the year 2034. Let's take a closer look at some more of the impressive features of the brand new Raspberry Pi 500, specifically what truly makes it the ultimate premium desktop computing experience. I want to strongly emphasize that there is absolutely no external funding behind this particular review, nor is there any form of sponsorship whatsoever. In fact, the channel doesn't even have monetization enabled at this current time. This is simply my own honest and independent review of this exciting new product. Aside from that, let's begin by carefully looking at this particular image. Perhaps I will significantly enlarge it here for better viewing. The overall design is undoubtedly quite elegant, and as I previously mentioned, the keyboard itself is indeed mechanical. The only singular thing I personally do not particularly care for is all the excessive LED lighting, even though it most definitely makes it appear much more stylish and visually appealing. But like with all the LED parts, all these weird colors that they now put everywhere, after seeing them a couple of times, you already get tired of them. I'm sure there's a function inside, though I can't check it here, that lets you turn them off if you don't like them, and that's fine. There are people who like them, after all. The budget mechanical keyboard, by the way, I also notice the keys are very low, more suited for programmers than those really tall ones where your fingers get stuck, undoubtedly offers some interesting performance because I see that in the premium desktop version, it comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So you can find them in a modern laptop, but also in a desktop computer. Yes, all right, you can still find some with 32 gigabytes, but they're more limited. And this one in the desktop version, mind you, comes with nothing less than an NVMe of 256 gigabytes. So here we basically have a truly top-notch experience, as the word premium suggests. By the way, let's see if I can show it. There we go. Perfect. Here it is. Here, you just simply need to remove the outer case as it's fully integrated. And if even with the included card, this internal storage isn't quite enough for you, you can obviously remove it and perhaps install a larger or a faster drive. Nothing particularly special. Well, this is a much more technical detail about the Gateron KS33 Blue Low Profile switch, which might be of more interest to technical enthusiasts. I've already mentioned this part to you. And it's light fantastic. Actually, I don't really like this keyboard, meaning it's a great product, even aesthetically and visually. For more details, there's quite extensive documentation on their website. Fast power for computer, built-in AI, level acquire, keyboard for ultimate compact PC experience. We've already talked about this at length. The processor is 2.4 gigahertz, 60 gigabytes RM Cortex. The memory is 8 gigabytes, but even in the premium desktop version, it can go up to 6 gigabytes. And the micro SD can also support in the premium version, what is the NM version with NVMe, so one of the really fast SSDs, the integration as far as the gigabyte, the GPO header, which we mentioned earlier, but basically glossed over. The costs obviously depend on the versions, uh, ranging from $120 to $90. But here we're also talking about, and we need to go back, okay, the ultimate all-in-one PC, all-in-one Raspberry P500, on sale now at $200, and so on. Clearly, you need to carefully consider what you actually need it for. The price should be evaluated carefully based on what you're going to do and the real necessity, considering how the Raspberry or other similar boards were originally conceived, and how, of course, it has evolved. So here I need to check carefully. For the keyboard print layouts, we have the UK version, but we also have the US, the American keyboard. We absolutely need to carefully see if other various types of keyboards will indeed remain readily available, but this is obviously something that still truly needs to be officially confirmed. I was looking at this news regarding the Raspberry Pi and otherwise all-in-one PCs, Raspberry Pi 500 Plus on sale now at, 
what I mentioned to you earlier, I'm not really adding any new information here. Let's just say it's the most complete desktop computer ever made by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And with this design, they wanted to give it a certain character or in any case, a nostalgic tribute to the machines of our youth. More or less, if I refer here to what we would call the Commodore, which we used to call the Biscotton and so on, yeah, that comparison could work. By the way, here I noticed that the keys are interchangeable, which was information I was looking for earlier, switcher keys, and also in this part, by changing the keys with a specific kit, and this was actually the part I was most interested in. Not that it was more important than the whole review, but still, being able to set up a layout with different Italian, French, German keyboards and so on. It's possible to swap out the various keys precisely because this is a mechanical keyboard. Thank you. Advanced, it has switches. Now I've read more carefully. Gateron, I hope that's how you pronounce it. KST3 with RGB backlighting, which, well, they could have left out, but anyway, it's programmable. By the way, here are the compatible keycaps, and actually, this is all the part we've already seen and that I've already talked to you about. I can only add that this project is the result of the work of the entire Raspberry Pi team, with special mentions for industrial design and electronic engineering, and in fact, it's conceived as the spiritual successor to those computers that defined an era probably riding this wave of vintage that's overwhelming us, because the prices especially for vintage and retro machines, have now skyrocketed what you could once get for 100, 200 euros or dollars, and they'd practically give them away. Now, in this vintage craze, things have flipped, and these machines even cost five, six, seven times as much. For example, you can go to one of the most famous stores to buy an Amiga, and if you look at the Amiga 2000, or even the 3000 or 4000, if you can manage to get one, I did a review of what you could call a new Amiga by Apollo OS, which runs a 68080. It's true, the price is definitely very high, but it's also true that getting an original Amiga with a 68080 processor, especially an Amiga 4000, has now become not only impossible to find, but also extremely expensive. Anyway, the market will increasingly move toward these FPGAs, these types of boards, and especially toward ARM and RISC5. We'll probably leave Intel behind in the future, but that's just my opinion. And what can I say? Happy memories. I'll wrap up this brief review here. If you've made it this far, I sincerely thank you for keeping me company for these few minutes, for this short time. And I'll see you soon on the channel with new videos, new reviews, and more. Thanks to everyone. Claudio.